In this step, we're going to have our first go at UV mapping. And what UV mapping is, is it's to do with how textures are mapped onto our polygon shapes. And you can change those depending on what you're doing. So flat surfaces like our floor are quite easy, but surfaces with lots of different directions like the table take a little bit more thought. To get us started though, we're going to do what's called a planar projection on the floor. So we're going to start by having the floor selected. You can see I'm not in my hypershade for this. I've gone back to my main Maya perspective window. And with the floor selected, up at the top of the screen, you have a UV menu. And within that menu, you've got some different ways that you can choose to map. So there's cylindrical, planar, and spherical. And then there are some others up here, which we'll also look at at some point. But we will start with doing a planar projection. Before I do that, though, I would just like to show you the UV editor. So let's open this up for now. And this will show us the way the UVs are at the moment for the floor. So they're actually mapped fine already, but I would like to just show you how to do mapping anyway. And I'm gonna do it, I think, to change the direction of the slabs, just so that I feel like we've accomplished something with this. So for now, I'm gonna close the UV editor and my UV toolkit, make sure that I'm in object mode and I have the floor selected. We'll go UV and we're gonna do planar. Okay, and that will make it look worse, first of all, probably, because we've mapped it across the x-axis, which is causing lots of stretching. So what we will do is sort that out. So we're just going to go back into object mode and select our floor. Then we'll go to UV, and we're going to click on the little box this time next to planar so that we can change the settings. Now we're going to get it right. So we're going to choose to project from the y-axis, and this is really important. Make sure that you have keep image width and height ratio selected. It's very rare that I turn that off. So make sure that you have that selected and then click on project. And you'll see that now we have projected our UVs as we want to. Whilst we currently have that projection done, you can see that in my attribute editor, if yours isn't open, press Ctrl and A, we can change the rotation angle. So I'm just going to rotate that by 90 degrees type that number in and press enter and that's flipped the projection around and now what I want to do is just get this to tile a little bit so repeat the texture and there are a number of ways that we can do this but for now I want to do this in the hypershade so I'm just going to go back into object mode here and then into my hypershade I'll just bring this back make sure I can see the ground and what I want to do is make sure that I have my floor two material available. So what I'm going to do, just in case you can't still see yours, so I can see all my material here, but let's say for some reason you can't, what you do to bring that shading network back is you right click and hold on the material and choose to graph the network. And that will show up everything within that. And what we want to do is tell each of these textures to repeat. And in order to do that, we're going to use these place 2D texture nodes. So if we select one, you'll see that it brings up the options for it. And we're going to change the repeat UV to maybe 3x3. Three three. And you won't see much change yet because we've got to change all of them. So then we're going to do the roughness and we'll make that 3x3 three three as well. And it'll really come together when we change this depth one here, the normal map. So let's make this three by three as well, three and three. And now you'll see that the tiles look much smaller. Uh, this is a nicer preview, everything's good. So we've now used UV placement to change the appearance of our floor material. If you want to, you can also have a quick render look at it now to see how it's coming out. But what I'm gonna do is move over to the next step where we're gonna create the material that we'll put on the walls. So I'll see you there. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.